Good morning, everyone. Um, I will take a second real quick to thank uh, the craft beer professionals for having me on. I'll explain who I am in a minute, um, but first why I'm here. I wanted to share with you breweries, branding, and the built environment. And this will be an architect's perspective. So first I will start with my obligatory legal statement. I'm not gonna read through it. I just want to note that this presentation is for educational purposes only. And this discussion is only a small window into what's involved with any project and don't try this at home. So who am I? Uh, my name is Joe Alter. I am currently pursuing my architectural license in the state of Michigan. I am the senior project manager and architectural designer at Design Team Plus located in like the Detroit metro area. I am a member of Fermenta and our firm is also a member of the Michigan Brewers Guild and the Ohio Craft Brewers Association. I'm an associate member of the American Institute of Architects and a member of the Michigan Historic Preservation Network. Um, I have worked myself on about 10 or more breweries. It's been a while since I counted that. Uh, different brewery projects in the state of Michigan over the past seven years that I've been with Design Team Plus. But my firm has worked on and completed uh, maybe 18 or more. Um, so personally, I prefer meads and hard seltzers to like a stout. Uh, bonus points if it's pink. So what we're going to do today is learn about why brewers and architects should be friends, understanding and developing your brand, the interpretation of your brand into the built environment. And finally, we'll review some case studies from Design Team Plus portfolio. And then I'll do my requisite Q&A session. So we might not professionally brew the beer, but we're extremely knowledgeable in the behind the scenes work that make a brewer's life easier. A short list of what an architect can assist with are improved safety and reduction of liability, sustainability and reduction on environmental impact and minimization of your carbon footprint, improved accessibility and functionality, increased property value and better resale value, greater connection to context and environment, a stronger connection to the neighborhood fabric, enhanced user experience, improved energy performance, compliance with local, state, and federal regulations, we as architects have a gift for navigating building codes, zoning ordinances, and even liquor laws. Uh, your jurisdiction may have additional regulations that we're trained to sniff out and share with our clients. And tangible aesthetic, there is a science behind making something pretty, and architects are well-versed in geometry and the ratios of beauty. Uh, we can help with reducing maintenance costs. We can help you weigh the pros and cons of different building systems and even introduce products that will cost less over time and make inhabiting your space a better experience. And part of the reason that I'm here today, architects can bring increased brand recognition through design. So we can help you make deliberate decisions and create custom designs that are truly yours and part of your brand. Whether you're a microbrewery or looking to franchise, um, Architect can help you formulate your unique identity. You get the picture. So building your brand involves a lot of storytelling. To talk to any marketing consultant and they'll start you off with some homework to identify your core values, establish a vision, and set goals for yourself and your team. The addition of a logo helps with your visual identity and brand. Your product is important, of course, possibly quite useless with brewing the beer, um, but I will advise you to keep your brand in the front of your mind and design a menu that keeps with the image of your brand that you're trying to maintain. Your physical location is important. Does your space have a unique personality that you wish to enhance? Do you want to bring in local or regional influence? Uh, if you have the opportunity to to construct a ground up facility, ask yourself what's the overall vibe you want your guests to feel and experience as they enter your space. And that leads to the customer experience. You know, your beer brought them in the door, but what makes them stick around? What makes people wanna become regulars or bring their friends? Now I'll turn it to you. Thinking of your brand, whatever it may be, try and think of three distinct adjectives that describe your brand. 
So you control the customer's experience. So determine the focus of your brand. What's the most important facet to your image? Is it the brew house, the tap room or bar, uh, featured entertainment, or something completely different? Once you determine the focus of your brand, placement of that key element is the most important. So when customers enter your space, what's the first thing that they see? Is that the first thing you want them to see? First impressions are important when entering a space. Put elements that are near and dear to your brand at the front and center, placing important features to your brand where all patrons have to view, pass by, or touch reaffirms your brand. So here we see two different sketch options of a conceptual brewery. Uh, the first option, so the one on the left, the client's branding was centered around the bar. The design was such that the bar and the taps were placed so that the first thing they see upon entering the space is the L-shaped bar and the taps on the back wall. The back bar was to be illuminated so passersby can catch glimpses of the bar feature from either street facade. So the right-hand sketch features a different branding concept. So this client's brand is heavily tied to education. The idea of a teaching brew house was at the heart of their brand. The teaching brew house was designed with perimeter half walls accompanied by a drink ledge, allowing students and those interested in the process of brewing beer, the ability to enjoy the product and learn how it's being made. So materiality, the materials and colors you select play an integral role in your brand identity. Major components of your brand are gonna involve the logo, signage, graphics that are uniquely yours, a color palette, your overall visual identity, and lighting selections for your space. What elements are you literally highlighting? Is the light right for the space? You don't want it to be too dim, and you don't want it to be overly bright and illuminated with fluorescent light. When you're selecting these materials, keep in mind the durability of the product and where are you placing it? For example, is it a specialty wall covering that may not be rated for commercial use? Or is it in a location that's gonna take a lot of abuse and have to withstand a lot of people touching it or leaning against it? Safety, big component. Flooring materials, for example. Be sure you're selecting products that are intended to be used in a brew house or rated for a tap room. Slippery floors and large rugs are huge red flags to designers. Um, and also think about the maintenance of the finishes you're selecting. Is there a countertop you're looking at going to require regular sealing? Um, look at items which may have continuous maintenance issues and steer clear. Um, take note of materials and other breweries and tap rooms, but do not copy it. You want to take note and steer your brand in a different and hopefully innovative direction. Keep in mind the safety of your patrons and staff and focus on the ambiance you're wish, wishing to convey. Skilled interior designers and architects can help by suggesting innovative ways to use mundane materials or materials you haven't even heard before. Keep your mind open. Also, diversity, equality, and inclusion, or DEI for short, is the practice of including people from all different backgrounds, experiences, and abilities during the design process to create a more universally relevant and useful product, or in our case, a space. Keep in mind those patrons who have differing abilities when making decisions on counter heights, seating heights, seating arrangements, flooring materials, and even signage. Providing all closely spaced bar top seating is not inclusive of those with smaller statures or those using mobility devices to get around. Designing signage and menus with large legible font and contrasting colors are better for those with visual impairments. While there are federal regulations like the 2010 ADA standards for accessible design, which set forth minimum requirements for a building to be physically accessible to those with disabilities, there are things you can do as a business owner or tenant that go above and beyond the code. Talk with your designer about what's important to you and your brand, and they'll help you to make informed decisions. Now we'll look at the fun part, some case studies that exemplify all this information. 
So first is the Black Hop Brew Stillery, which is a brewery and a distillery, which only got through the early planning stages, but the identity and branding was there. So the Black Hop Brewery is the adaptive reuse of an existing building. So I asked you for three adjectives a few moments ago. We ask the same for our brewery clients, and in this case, a brew stillery. So for Black Hop, it was crazy, sexy, cool. So how did that translate to the building environment? Sexy. Uh, we'll start with crazy. So with crazy, we had um, issues and um, up against the local jurisdiction for their signage regulations. So we couldn't put more than just their logo and their name on the signs that you see out there. So what we had to do is we created a really creative way of making a creative, crazy graphic and still bring their identity. So you'll notice on the awnings, it's actually their logo and their name, but we distorted it into a way that, you know, didn't qualify as signage, but still created a real crazy fun graphic that helped patrons identify where they were going. And you'll see the before was, it was actually a bakery and it was purple. So this is a crazy difference from what we previously saw. Sexy. So we use the idea of bling. So the introduction of materials and colors can be described as sexy. So the building facade was to be clad with bold colors and a mosaic opalescent black tile was used to catch the attention of people passing by. On the interior, materials with high gloss or jeweled finishes were used, especially for the bar face and back bar, as that was Black Hop's prominent feature. So the lighting was designed to reflect off these surfaces and give the effect of light reflecting through like a sexy diamond ring. And finally, cool. The theory here is to create a cool and inviting outdoor environment. So somewhere you could imagine sitting and enjoying a pint, creating a destination. So next we went into Heights Brewing, which is currently under construction. So their three adjectives were delicious, decadent, and local. So is this a pastry shop or a brewery? Um, our challenge was to bring those words into the building and still have it be a brewery feel. So the beer. So how does delicious relate to the inside? Well, for this, we used a beer map, which outlines beer styles and their offshoots and identifies which breweries in the area brew that style. And you'll see that on the back wall there. This then ties into their local adjective by tagging Heights Brewing and their beer names to the styles identified on the map, which included all Michigan brands. Decadent. In the built environment, Decadent is a design which is eaten with one's eyes. It's a way to feed one's visual hunger and drive customers back time and time again. The brick wall will be ever changing as mug club members. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back one. So the brick you see in the back, their names will be etched into the brick, making them one with the brewery. So the bar face is proposed as a local as a perforated metal screen, which is then backlit. So depending on the time of the day and the interior lighting conditions set by the owners, light emitted from the metal screen will change in intensity on the floor and patrons sitting at the bar, creating interest in movement. And we also incorporated some funky retro light fixtures that you see above the tables. Local. So part of that is the beer map that I described earlier and the design featured the backlit perforated bar face as well as the metal awnings you'll see, which helped to preserve the original building facade and the city's identity. So we also looked at enlarging the windows and allowed them to open so that residents enjoying a pint can be seen and increased visibility is increased profits for the brewer. During construction, the original mosaic tiled floor was uncovered, and you'll see that on the right-hand side of the screen, um, which hints at the brewery's history. So with that local adjective, um, 
they're looking, we're looking now at ways that we can try and incorporate, preserve, or bring elements of the original Stein house into the design. So we'll go into the first of our established breweries. So this is Draft Horse. Their words were rustic, equestrian, and quality. So how does that translate to the built environment? Rustic. Um, reclaimed barn wood was used as the feature wall behind the bar. Equestrian. The Draft Horse Brewery is the first and only brewery to our knowledge in Michigan to have hitching posts for horses. The aesthetic was brought into the interior with accessories and the brewer's logo being that of a horseshoe. The tabletops were fabricated by the brewer using pressed straw and epoxy, keeping with the barn feel. Quality. The word quality relates to the beer, but also to the materials used in the space. Durable and timeless materials were used within the brew house to make maintaining a clean quality product possible. Easy to clean, non-porous surfaces were used within the brew house and tap room. Subway wall tile installed in a random pattern provides interest on an otherwise boring wall. Another established brewery is the Sheboygan Brewing Company. So when we started this project, the Sheboygan Brewing Company had just completed an extensive rebranding exercise and developed new branding and marketing guidelines, which were associated with their three adjectives, Northern Michigan, outdoors, and beauty. So for Northern Michigan, um, it's usually thought of by us Southern Michigan people as a vacation destination, people go camping, there's lots of recreational opportunities like hiking, biking, trails, um, lakes, rivers, and streams. So color selections, both inside and out, were dictated by the branding and marketing manual that the client had previously set up. The existing wall history, so you'll see there on the right-hand side, there's like a, looks like a slat wall, but that's actually their history wall. And it reinforces their presence in northern Michigan since the brewery originally opened in 1872 and it remained open until 1911. So using historic Sheboygan images and artifacts, we developed the Monk Club member wall. So as lifetime members, these people become part of the continued history of the brewery. Continuing with northern Michigan, um, enhancing the brand and creating a destination, we actually came up with the slogan that all trails lead to CB Co. And they do. Uh, we fabricated a custom wall covering that's outlined here that shows each trail and how it leads towards, you know, going up northern Michigan towards CB Co. The outdoors. The enlargement of the existing outdoor terrace created a backyard retreat feel, which is synonymous with the northern Michigan environment. Their proximity to the trail system was embraced by providing designated bicycle parking for patrons. We proposed the implementation and conversion of a teardrop camper, which is pictured on their blood honey orange label as an outdoor tap room. So this helps take their brand outdoors and travel to where the people are. And beauty, the original building with beige and sage green facade blended it into the overly beige streetscape. So adding color helped people identify the brewery and it aligns with their branding and marketing guidelines. Stats are usually boring, but here's some pretty cool stats. So best of all, the improvements were measurable made by Sheboygan Brewery. So after completion of the exterior improvements in 2021, Sheboygan Brewing realized a 54% growth in business over all previous years. For the beginning of 2022, they tracked an additional increase of 12% in the first six months over 2021. And the last of our featured case studies is Stig's Brewery and Kitchen. So similar to Sheboygan, Stig's had a defined marketing direction and associated their brand with three adjectives, lumberjack, historic, and character. So Stig, is a lumberjack who saves the world one beer at a time. So each of their featured comics relate to one of Stig's foundation beers. 
So the lumberjack theme was inherent to the brand's identity and connecting it to the architecture was a super fun task. Historic. The building was originally built as the office for lumber yard number one in Northern Michigan. In 1897, the lumber yard burned down, sparing this office building. It was then moved to downtown Boyne City and repurposed as the Boyne City Gaylord and Alpena Railroad Administrative Building. Super exciting. So we fast forward to 2016 with its interior and exterior historic features and a little help from Sign Team Plus. The brewery was designed meeting the requirements of the state and federal guidelines for historic preservation, resulting in a federal tax credit equaling 20% of the construction costs or over $178,000. And lastly, character. The lumberjack and lumberyard feel was both, both preserved and introduced to the historic building. A 72 inch crosscut saw was used as the backdrop for mounting the beer tats. A custom hatchet door handle adorns the front entry. Um, Preservation of the original interior wood and finishes was done to keep the historic feel of the original office building. And original gas lamp ceiling fixtures were replicated for the interior. And the beautiful bar face you see here was a bottle cap mosaic of Sunset Lake of Charlevoix. So it enhanced the original character of the area and the building. The bar also featured a simulated flowing spittoon on the floor, which gives light and reminiscent of the rustic bars of days gone by. Now thinking of your brand, whatever it may be, try to think of the, the distinct adjectives and how those relate to your space or your future space. Does anyone have questions for me? See if there's anything in the chat. Awesome. Well, I thank everybody and thank you to Craft Beer Professionals. And I appreciate this time.